All right, what up, y'all? Time for another limited guide. Strict Saving's about to drop in a week and a half or so on Arena, so this will be your compilation of everything Strict Saving has to offer. We'll go over the cards, the concepts, the mechanics, and help you get a leg up on the competition. Here we go. Uh, mechanics, first of all, there's gonna be two major new mechanics that are shared across all five colors. And then this is a Factions Guild set. They're calling it colleges now because we're all in Harry Potter wizard school. Um, but the first one is gonna be Magecraft. All five colors have it. This is whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, and there's tons of ways to copy them in this format. And this is the spell set, so instants and sorceries matter. Uh, this effect is going to trigger. I think uh, this one is going to be like a snowball effect. If you can cast two or three instants or sorceries in a turn, you can enable some pretty nutty alpha strike stuff. Next up, lesson and learn. Uh, lessons sit outside your main deck, they sit in your sideboard if you're playing limited, and then learn spells allow you to go fetch them. So when you cast a spell with learn on it, you can select a lesson you own from outside the game, bring it into your hand, and then cast it. So for that reason, these, tends, these tend to be a little bit undertuned, a little bit underpowered, but you make up for that because you don't have to put them in your deck, right? You can just go get them when you need them for whichever lesson is, is going to serve you the best at that moment. So. Pretty cool stuff there. And lastly is the factions. These, this is a guild-based set. There's five guilds here in enemy color pairings, and uh, they're all gonna have their own little flavor, their own little mechanics that they try to do, their own little game plan, and we'll get into all that as well. So, what should you do in the draft? Well, here's what you need to know. So, there is a lesson slot in Kaldheim. You had a Snowland slot. Now, in this, uh, in this format, you're gonna have a lesson slot. So, every pack is gonna have a lesson card in it. Uh, it's going to be rare, mythic rare, or common. There's an uncommon lesson slot as well uh, that's going to be separate. So you can open multiple lessons in the same pack, but every pack is going to have at least one. Um, so if you're in a draft table of eight, you're going to get three, maybe four per deck. And uh, that seems to be a pretty good number. Uh, you do want to try to get some of these because when you get learn cards, it just gives you good value. Right. Um, if you don't have any lessons to go get with your learn cards, you can rummage, so you can discard a card and draw a card, but it's usually best to have a lesson to go find. These are situational spells, these lessons are, um, that uh, usually a bit underpowered, like I said, but still very good if you can target what you're getting, kind of tutor them up from outside your deck. Lastly in the draft, find your college. This is a two-color set. Splashing is going to be difficult. There's five guilds, five paths that you can go down, uh, so you're going to want to stick to those. Um, this means at the beginning of the draft, steer, try to steer away from taking a multicolor card. If you see a good red-white card and a good white card, take just the white card, because that way if the red doesn't come your way, you can still audible into the white-black guild into Silver Quill. So. What, those are three things there to watch out, and let's get into the guilds. Uh, first up is Lorehold. I think this is going to be the most consistently strong. Uh, we'll see if it's a little bit too slow and fiddly for the format, but from what I can see now, this, this guild has great synergy, amazing recursion, amazing creatures at common, good interaction, um, and then it's good no matter which order you draw your cards in. You can draw your synergy pieces, you can draw your enable, enablers, uh, in any order, and the deck is still going to function just fine. Up next, Witherbloom. I think when everything comes together and you draw your cards in the right order, this is going to be the most powerful guild in the set. Uh, this is uh, some crazy synergy here. Great creatures, amazing value, uh, great removal, just everything you're going to want um, in a guild right here when you can draw those cards in order. Um, so keep an eye out for this. I think these are going to be the top two guilds. And then there's a little bit of a step down, and you get into Prismari, Quandrix, and Silverquill. Uh, Prismari has great splashing potential, very strong endgame, uh, good magecraft synergy, uh, but it c can be a little bit slow. And so this, depending on how the format metagame shakes out, this might be on the short end of the stick there. 
Next up is Quandrix. Good role player creatures, good interaction for blue-green, which typically doesn't have a lot of ways to interact, and very good card draw. Uh, there's a little minor theme here where they want to build up to eight lands, which is, again, a little bit slow. So we'll have to see all, all that shakes out. And therefore, their cards are more generically good, not necessarily synergistic. So uh, that's why that was bumped down a little bit. And last up, I have Silver Quill. I think this is going to be the aggro deck of the format, and we'll see how strong it is. It's too early to tell right now. Uh, aggro decks are typically a little bit harder to play than your more mid-range or control decks. you got to kind of understand and see how the format shakes up before you can form a, a really good opinion. But it does have potential, uh, very evasive threats, aggro curve, um, great alpha strike potential with creature pump, counters, magecraft synergy, you name it. All right, let's get into the colors first. So we'll start with white. Uh, go over some uncommons, then we'll get into the top three comments for each color. First up, Professor of Symbology. Just a fantastic two drop. Two one for two, so it trades off, but you also learn when you're early game. So you can go grab, uh, you can go tutor up one of your lessons. It trades off for a two drop. There's lots of ways in Lore Hold or Silver Quill to get this back or get more value from it. So it's just a, an all around great creature that's going to give you good value. Uh, lesson. So this is more situational. This is what I was talking about. Three mana for an exile target non-land permanent. Its controller creates a 3-2 red and white spirit creature token. Now, if you can create maybe a treasure or something like that, uh, there's different ways in red to, to make treasure. You can exile that and make a 3-2. Or if your opponent plays a bomb, you can go ahead and exile that uh, if the 3-2 isn't going to be relevant. Or if, it's, if you don't want this card, you just don't have to draw it, right? you can learn for a different lesson. And that's what makes these cards so valuable. Next up, I have a build around in white. And I think this one has a lot of potential, but it could just fall flat on its face. We have to see how everything shakes out. But show of confidence is two mana. When you cast it, copy it for each other instant sorcery spell you've cast this turn. You can choose new targets for the, for the copies. Its effect is a 1-1 counter on target creature, gains vigilance until end of turn. So this is one of those alpha strike type uh, scenarios where if you cast an instant in a sorcery in your turn you go to attacks you attack with your creatures then you cast show of confidence this copies itself three times so you can give three creatures plus one plus one counters you can put them all on the same creature uh, you're gonna blow up that combat it can get in for lethal it's gonna trigger all of your magecraft cards three more times and that's just for two mana so you can see how you can really go off with a spell like this. So I think this one's going to be interesting, and there's going to be more than a few games that I think are going to be ended by show of confidence. All right, top commons. This is going to be the most relevant for limited, I think. Uh, Pillar Drop Rescuer. Uh, five mana for a 2-2 flyer. Not great, but it is an evasive 2-2 uh, flyer. Uh, the best part of this card is its ETB effect. Uh, return a creature card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to your hand. So we went over Professor of Symbology, which is a great two drop. Uh, Silver Quill, we talked about having great evasive threats that are cheap. Uh, so this can just get those back, have them trade off again, uh, and you get an evasive body. Also in Lore Hold, the mechanic is getting creatures out of the graveyard or cards out of the graveyard. You get synergies from that. So it's gonna trigger those synergies. Just a really good glue card that I think is gonna fit in a lot of different decks. Up next, Beaming Defiance. So it's rare to get a trick is one of the top three commons for a color, but here we are. Uh, it's two mana, instant speed, uh, target creature you control gets plus two, plus two, and hexproof until end of turn. Uh, this is fantastic because of the magecraft synergies, because it helps you win combat, it can help push through lethal damage, and it can help your creature avoid removal uh, by giving it hexproof. So just an all-around fantastic card um, that's going to be a real pain in the ass when your opponent sees you cast it. So um, next up, this could be a lot of different cards. I chose Combat Professor. It's a four mana, two, three flyer, but its ability is at the beginning of combat on your turn, target creature, and it can target itself, gets plus one plus zero and vigilance until end of turn. So it becomes a three, three flying vigilance. Creatures in this set tend to be a little bit smaller, so a 2-3 holds the air pretty well defensively, and you can give it Vigilance, which means your opponent can't crack back. If you're in a situation where you have a big creature on the ground, um, you can give that creature Vigilance, get in with that, and it has Vigilance so your opponents can't attack back into that ground creature. So it's just a very versatile, all-around utility uh, card. So really like that one a lot, too. All right, up next we got Blue. 
Good learn card here, divide by zero. Three mana, instant speed, uh, return target spell or permanent with mana value one or greater to its owner's hand, learn. So you can go get whatever lesson you need, and of note, return target spell, so you can kind of counter a spell for a turn. It's a great tempo play. Another thing to note, it can't return tokens, right? No tokens or lands, even though it says permanent, because those things don't have mana values. Um, but it's still, I think, a very, very strong card. There's lots of different counter synergies in this format. Uh, you can use it as a trick. So there's lots of different things that you can do with this one. Blue also wants to ramp, uh, and Kelpie Guide really helps a lot. So Quandrix and Prismari both have a lot of huge creatures and huge spells that they want to cast. So Kelpie Guide, three mana for a 2-2, two, two. tap it, untap another permanent you control. That's land, creature, you name it. If you do get to the magic number of eight lands, it becomes an icy manipulator, and it taps target permanent, any permanent, land, creature, anything. So fantastic card, good early game to help get out your big threats, good late game to help, down, help lock down your opponent its threats and then build realm this is an easy one uh pretty simple uh mentor's guidance three mana sorcery uh scry one draw card not impressive but uh there are some tribal elements in this set and so when you cast this spell copy it if you control a planeswalker cleric druid shaman or like a wizard so in prismari and quandrix you're going to see lots of druids lots of uh, wizards, uh, some shamans in there. So you should have ways to copy this. And then when it copies itself, of course, you're triggering all your magecraft abilities again, and you're scrying one, drawing a card, then scrying one, drawing a card. So uh, that's gonna be more powerful than divination, of course. So I think it's a good uh, little build around, something to include in your decks if you can trigger that copy. Next up, top commons. So this was really tough. Uh, the easy part was the first one, Frost Trickster. I'm pretty confident this is going to be a really rock solid playable in any deck that has blue in it. Three mana, two two flyer, and then it locks down a creature. So think about Berg Strider in Call Time. That was a great creature. Uh, five mana for a four four. So you did get a bigger body, but it wasn't evasive, and it was two more mana. So this is a cheap, efficient, evasive creature that locks down your opponent's biggest threat. Uh, you can put any number of these in your deck and be pretty happy about it. The tough ones were the next two. So Burian Books is uh, a fine removal spell. It's instant speed, five mana, but it costs two less if it targets an attacking creature, and then it puts that attacking creature on its owner's library second from the top. So this isn't card advantage, right? Because um, you're not putting this back in their hand, you're actually replacing a draw step for your opponent, so you're, you're card neutral, which is good. Uh, and it's also a big tempo play. You're setting them back. This helps you win races, it helps get threats off the field, or if you're facing down a big token, and there's a lot of tokens in this set, uh, it just gets rid of that token. So I think it's versatile enough uh, where I would include it. All right, uh, Resculpt. This is another one, very situational, but I think very useful. Uh, two mana for an instant speed exile target artifact or creature. Its controller creates a 4-4 four, four elemental. Uh, you're gonna target your own stuff 90% of the time with this, and that's just fine. You can use this in response to removal. Uh, you can use this after attacks um, uh, to untap that creature, essentially. Uh, so you can block on the crackback. You can use this as a combat trick as well. If you have a tapped creature or a 1-1, one, one, uh, you can turn it into a 4-4 four, four and eat their 3-3. Three, three. Uh, you can also use this end of turn on a treasure token that you may have, because you're Prismari and they like to make treasure tokens. All of a sudden you have a 4-4 four, four that's going to be able to attack next turn out of nowhere, and that could just win the game for you. So I think there's a lot of different applications for Resculpt, where it's going to be incredibly strong uh, in in one to two copies amounts in, in, in a Prismari deck. You certainly don't want to overload on this card, but I think it does have really nice applications uh, if you have one or two of them in your deck. All right, up next, black. Uh, a good versatile lesson. So black creates a lot of tokens, a lot of one-one tokens, and wither bloom. Silver quill's got a lot of cheap creatures. So this is a good good lesson that you can fetch. Three mana, uh, exile target creature or planeswalker. In addition, uh, you have to exile a creature you control. But you can set this up so it hurts your opponent a lot more than you, right? If they have a huge bomb, a planeswalker or something, you sacrifice your 1-1 one, one, and you exile their creature, their planeswalker, and there's no way they can recur that. And if it's not useful in that situation, you just get a different lesson. So that's what makes these things so versatile. Um, such high picks, I think, uh, where you'd want to go after a lesson. 
Up next, Instant Interaction. Black gets a lot of this, uh, and I think it's really modular and very good, right? There's different modes. Uh, Umbral Juke is three mana for an instant. You can create a 2-1 flyer at instant speed, which is fine. It's a fine limited card. Or you can uh, have target player sacrifice a creature planeswalker. So there's different situations where that's going to be useful for you. And you have to have this in your back pocket. I think the versatility is what makes this a strong card and one to look out for. Next up is a build around. I love this one. Plum the Forbidden. Two mana. Draw a card. Lose a life. The other text is, it's instant speed, by the way. Uh, the other text, as an additional cost to cast a spell, you may sacrifice one or more creatures when you do copy the spell. And we just talked about how Silver Quill and Wither Bloom have lots of creature tokens, lots of cheap creatures. So you can use this when you have three or four pest tokens in play. You can draw four cards or three cards for two mana. That's insane at instant speed. You can also use this in response to removal for a blowout on your opponent. Your opponent goes to remove your card, you cast Plum the Forbidden, uh, you copy it, so they use removal on your creature, now you draw two cards instead. So it's just a fantastic rate uh, for this effect, and the fact that it's at instant speed makes this one awesome. Can't wait to play with this card. All right, commons. Up first is, you know, your typical black removal spell. I don't think this is especially strong, but it does the job, right? Uh, four mana, destroy a creature, planeswalker. It's sorcery speed, which sucks. It's not instant speed. Um, and then it also has, whenever a creature blocks its turn, its controller loses one life. There could be some game, state, game states where this is useful, but not very often. Mostly you're just interested in that first line of text. Up next, Spectre of the Fence. Four mana for a 2-3 flyer is fine. It's it's fine and limited. Uh, the creatures in this format, like I said, tend to be a little smaller, so this holds the air pretty well. Uh, but what's awesome about it is its late game ability. It drains for two for six mana. Also, if you're in Wither Bloom, life gain is what triggers all of your, your synergy stuff. So late game, it's just a recursive form of, of life, gain that's gonna, life gain that's gonna trigger all your other stuff. So just a fantastic versatile card that's a late game threat. Your opponent's gotta deal with this or they're gonna die to it eventually, right? Next up, Hunt for Specimens. Two mana sorcery. Uh, this is the, a learn spell that's really good at common. It, uh, it creates a 1-1 pest token. When it dies, you gain a life. So again, it's going to trigger those Wither Bloom synergies. It's going to learn, so you're going to be able to go tutor up a lesson that whatever one fits for your situation. Um, and then you get your pest token. You get a creature out of it, too. And it's super cheap, so you can use it early game. So I just think it's a nice, versatile card that's going to draw you a card and do all the things that your deck wants to do. All right, up next, we got red. First up, I have what may be the Mythic Uncommon in the set. Uh, it's just a very fa it's just a great uh, rate for this removal spell. Three damage of burn to any target uh, for three mana. It's, it is sorcery speed, which you know it's it's a pretty big uh, detractor because it's sorcery. But you learn, and then you go tutor up whatever lesson you need. So it's just a great card. Uh, you'll take as many of these as you can get in a red deck. As we stated before, Prismari also wants to ramp, so they have big six, seven, eight mana spells. Grinning Ignis does that. It's a 2-2 two, two for 3, which, you know, is acceptable. It's going to trade with something. But if it lives, the turn after you play it on turn 4, you can pay uh, a red, return it to your hand, and get 3 mana. Now you're at 6 mana. You can start casting those big spells, which is what Prismari wants to do. So I do think that this could be a good glue card in those types of, of ramp decks. Last up, we'll talk about a build around here. Uh, Ardent Dust Speaker. 5 mana for a 3-4. When it attacks, put an instant, instant or sorcery card from your graveyard on the bottom of your library. If you do, exile the top two cards of your library and you can play them. So that's awesome. This is the spell stat, uh, set, so you're going to have tons of instants and sorceries. All you have to do is attack. It doesn't have to deal combat damage. So you attack, put it on the bottom of your library. If you're in lore hold, you get a bunch of synergies for putting, uh, taking something out of the graveyard. Um, if you're in Prismari, they have discard effects for their sorceries and instants to create treasure tokens. And when you do that, it's going to exile and you're going to be able to play two cards. Let's say one's a land, you play that, now you're at six mana, and then you can cast your spell. Just a fantastic card if you can, uh, if you can swing with it. All right, top three commons. First up, Heated Debate. This is your, uh, your premier red removal. It's no Demon Bolt. But that's not saying this is a bad card, it's just saying how good of a card Demon Bolt from Call Time was. Uh, three mana, instant speed, can't be countered, which is relevant in this set. There's some decent counters in this set. Um, Heated Debate deals four damage to target creature or planeswalker. So, uh, 
look out for these. You'll want as many as you can get. This is a fine first pick. Illustrious Historian. This is just a two for one if you draw it early. It's a two mana, two one. Uh, you trade it off, goes to the graveyard. Tap five and exile it from your graveyard. So that's going to trigger your Boros sy synergies, right? Um, which is going to give you a bunch more effects. But it's also going to create a tapped 3 2 red and white spirit creature token. And it does that at instant speed. You can do that end of your opponent's turn, and then you can attack with that 3 2. So it's just a fantastic card. It's a two for one. Next up, this one was tough, but I think Pillar Drop Warden is going to be great in this set. The Inkling is the Silver Quill mascot, and those are 2-1 flyers. This is a 1-5 reach for 4, so it's, really, it's going to clown on those things. So it's got a big butt, can't get rid of it with, re with removal, and it also has an ability where if you sacrifice it for 2 mana, return an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. So it's going to get back your, your huge game-winning spells if you're in Prismari. It's going to trigger your uh, lore hold synergies by getting a card out of your graveyard. Uh, just a fantastic glue piece um, for red. All right, last up is green before we get into the guilds here. Green likes to ramp. Um, Quandrix uh, has a thing for eight lands, like we said, uh, but green can also splash a little bit. So Emergent Sequence is a rampant growth variant. So two mana, sorcery, search your library for a basic land, put it on the battlefield tapped. Um, the rub here is that it's going to make that land into a fractal creature with a plus one, plus one counter on it for each land you have enter the battlefield under your control this turn. So usually it's going to be a 2-2, two -two, right? Because you're going to keep a land in your hand. You're going to play that land on turn two. You cast this. That's going to be your third land, which ramps you. And then that land becomes a 2-2. Two -two. Uh, that opens that land up to removal, but oh well, right? That means your opponent's spending... Um, removal to get rid of your land so that's not so bad um in most cases it's just going to be a little creature that will hang around maybe it gets in for a couple points of damage but it also ramps you so great card it also like i said wants to get to eight mana it's got some fatties bookworm is the premier one it is eight mana it's a seven seven trample uh when it etbs gain three draw cards so it helps you win those races uh it also if it dies uh, it has an ability, three mana, put it from your graveyard into your library, third from the top. So if for whatever reason, you're splashing for some Boros, you're splashing green if you're in Lorehold, Boros, uh, this does trigger those leave the, leave the graveyard synergies as well. Next up is a build around. This one I think is going to be a little bit too slow for this format, but you never know. There could be some decks that take advantage of it. Uh, it's five mana for a 3-3 three, three, Magecraft. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. So we talked about those alpha strikes, being able to cast two or three spells in the same turn. And then there's spells where uh, when you do that, uh, you can copy spells and things like that. So it's, it's, it's not too difficult to create a game state where you're casting four or five spells in a turn and then this thing just goes off and pumps your whole team and you can do it at instant speed so there could be some nutty turns with this one too all right top commons i think green's got some really good creatures first up is professor of zoomancy green usually does get good creatures but uh the creatures are so small in this format that green's just outclass them big time so four mana for a four three when it etbs you get a pest a one one green in black or green pest creature token with when it dies you gain a life so it enables all your wither bloom synergies you get two bodies here um, you got Sacrifice Fodder in that 1-1, one, one, and then you get 5 points of power, 4 points of toughness for 4 mana. It's a great rate. Next up, Mage Duel. This is the fight spell at common for green. Green has a few in this format. One's green-blue, and then it has an uncommon one as well. Uh, it's 3 mana, costs 2 less to cast if you've cast another instant or sorcery spell this turn. So again, we're talking about going off and casting multiple spells in a turn. Uh, this is an, an enabler or a synergy piece for that. Um, and it is target creature you control gets plus one, plus two, and then it fights target creature you don't control. So just your typical fight spell. Last up, Bayou Groth. It's two mana for five, four. Okay, the catch. Sack a creature or pay an extra three. So it's a five mana, five, four, which is fine and limited. Or it's a two mana, five, four. There's a lot... It's very difficult to get like a one mana creature in this format. I don't see that happening a lot. What I, I envision for this card is it's 
turn four, it's turn five, you have a pest in play, you can pay this for two, you gain your life, get your Wither Bloom synergies, and then you play like another three drop or something. That's gonna be the common play pattern for this, and that's just fine, that is awesome. Your double spelling, your synergy is, is going awesome, everything's gravy. And you get a five four, so great card. I think you're gonna see a lot of those in Wither Bloom decks, and you're gonna die to those too, it's a big boy. All right, colorless up next, and then we'll get into the guilds. All right, first up, uh, Skylands. Each uh, college gets one. They're at common. Um, they're going to give you your color pair, so they're dual lands, or they enter the battlefield tapped, but then they scry one. So these are great end game lands, right? If you're flooded or whatever, you got nothing to do, you can scry lands to the bottom. They help you search for stuff or dig for stuff. So just a good utility card. Um, I wouldn't pick these too highly, but they're, you know, every, every deck's going to want one or two of them, right? And lessons. So like we talked about the lesson slot, uh, there's one in every pack. They are colorless spells. Uh, they're a little bit undertuned because of that, but environmental sciences, something like this, could help you splash. Uh, if you wanted to splash, we get some bomb. It uh, you gain two life, so it it, it helps with your wither bloom strat uh, synergies. So uh, there's applications for all of these. They're all niche level spells uh, which you want to be able to pull from. And those you'll see those at at, uh, uh, at the lesson slot, and then they'll be colorless. And then artifacts. There's not a lot, but spell satchel here helps you ramp. It has some magecraft stuff, and then it can help you draw cards if you. Uh, if you have a lot of mage, mage craft, copy of instant and sorceries and those type of things. So, all right, let's get into the guilds here. First up is Lorehold. Uh, their mascot is spirits, and leaving the yard is what they want stuff to do. Either it goes back to your hand, your library, exile, whatever. All right, first up is Quintorius. This card is insane. Gives all your spirits plus one plus zero, and they start as three twos, so they become four twos. It's a two four four five, so it's got a big butt. It's hard to kill. Uh, and then whenever one or more cards leave your graveyard, you get a spirit token, which is 3-2 normally, but it's a 4-2 with Quintorius in play. So this, as you can see, has the potential to just be completely insane, create an army of 4-2s, all this stuff in red-white is spirits anyway. This card is first pickable and incredibly nutty if you get it going. All right, Returned Pass Caller. This is a spirit as well. It's a 4-2 flyer. It is expensive. It's 6 mana. Uh, but... When it ETBs, you're going to turn a spirit, instant, or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. Again, it's hitting those synergies right on point there. It's just a fantastic endgame creature that's going to give you recursion and do all the things Lorehold wants you to do. Rip Apart. This is just a great removal spell and a fantastic thing to get back with Return Pass Caller. Very versatile, two mana, it's cheap, it is a sorcery, but it deals three damage to a creature or planeswalker, or there's not a lot of artifacts and enchantments, but it can destroy them, and if, if there's one that you want dead, it can do that. So it's very versatile, uh, there's lots of things that it can hit, uh, just a great card to recur and to use if you're in lore hold. All right, we also have some synergy pieces, there's a ton in lore hold. First up, uh, common creature, 3-3 three, three for 3, so you're already getting good stats. Whenever one or more cards leave your yard, scry one. Just a nice little effect on top of your 3-3. Three, three. And it's a spirit, so it gets buffed by Contorius. Next up, Reconstruct History. This one's a bit more of a build around, but it's fantastic. All right, you can return an artifact, enchantment, instant sorcery, and a planeswalker, or any combination of those, uh, from your yard to your hand. Of note, uh, these leave the yard abilities, it's one or more, so you'll only get one trigger for this, but if you set this up and build around where you're getting back three things, that's insane value for four mana. Um, and it's not hard at all in the spell set to get two things, get an instant and a sorcery back. Alright, up next, Lorehold Excavation. Two mana for an enchantment. It mills you every turn. If a land is milled, you gain a life. If it's a non-land, it pings your opponent for one. But... All of your creatures that end up in the yard, you can pay five mana for, exile them at instant speed, and create a tapped 3-2 white spirit creature token. So it turns all of your creatures into recursive threats. So this card is just insane for two mana. Definitely one of the things I'd want to blow up with Rip Apart if I had it. All right, last up is Lorehold Apprentice. So let's say your 3-2 spirit, uh, spirits can't get in. Well, Lorehold Apprentice, every time you cast a or copy an instant or sorcery spell uh you 
all your spirit creatures get tapped to deal damage to each opponent. So if you have two, three spirits in play, this starts pinging pretty hard. And you can do that at instant speed. Uh, so you can leave your three twos back on defense. You can leave all your spirits back on defense your stonebound mentor or whatever that end of turn cast an instant spell nug your opponent for three or four damage so very versatile card and it's also just a two two bear as well all right up next wither bloom they make pests that's their mascot their one ones pests are and then uh, when they die you gain a life uh, and their synergy stuff is based around life gain they got a lot of sacrifice synergy as well very strong guild uh, their legendary signpost creature is going to be Dina. Whenever you gain life, each opponent loses a life. So you start draining folks. Um, it's very easy to gain life in Witherbloom. Uh, it also has one tap one, sack a creature. It gets plus X plus zero, where X is the sacrifice creature's power. So this enables Dina to go in and do alpha strikes. So your opponent basically has to block Dina um, because you can sack a bunch of stuff and just hit them for like seven or eight or whatever it is. Uh, so Dean is very good, and it's only a 2-drop, right? It's a 1-3 um, for 2, so just a fantastic synergy piece. Up next, Witherbloom Apprentice, another 2-drop of 2-2. Two, two. Magecraft, every time uh, you cast or copy an instant or sorcery, you drain. So if you have Dina and Witherbloom Apprentice in place, every time you, you gain a life or every time you uh, uh, cast an instant or sorcery, you drain for two because you're gaining a life there. So it's just, uh, you can see how, how insane this can get over time. Up next, I think this card is crazy. I can't believe it's at common. I think this should be an uncommon because of the amount of ways Witherbloom has to gain life. Uh, you put in evasive threat. It's three mana with uh, Blood Researcher. It's at common. It's a 2-2 two, two Menace, so it's evasive already. 2-2 two, two Menace for 3 is already fine. But every time you gain life, you get a 1-1 one, one counter on it. So that this card is a must-deal-with threat every time. And it's at common. So everyone you're playing in Witherbloom is probably going to have one of these. At least. Maybe two, maybe three. So uh, very strong synergy piece. Very good payoff. Up next, more synergy stuff. So Deadly Brew. We talked about the Sacrifice theme for witherbloom this is a sorcery speed two mana each player sacks a creature planeswalker uh if you sacrifice a permanent this way you get another permanent card from your graveyard to your hand so you just sacrifice a past get your best creature back great for you you can set up board states where it really hurts your opponent um so this is just another good synergy piece for uh witherbloom and great recursion up next, I think this is one of the better tricks in the set. Uh, infused with Vitality. It's also a common. Two mana. Instant speed. Until end of turn, target creature gets death touch. And when it dies, return it to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control. You gain two life. So you can use this on your Dina, which is a 1-3 block. Kill their 5-5 five, five, or their 4-4. Four, four. It comes back. Then you gain life and drain your opponent. Just fantastic for the rate. Just fantastic card. And instant speed, too. Up next, Tend the Pest. So this card has the potential to be completely crazy. Two mana, instant speed. When you cast it, sack a creature, create X Pest, where X is the, the sacrifice creature's power. So if you have um, a, a five four and you sack that in response to removal, all of a sudden now you have five one one pests. Um, you can even do this to enable alpha strikes if you have pump, uh, it's just fantastic. Last up, I have a lesson here. Pest summoning three mana. Create two 1-1 one, one pests. When they die, you gain a life. Again, this is just a glue card, and you can uh, put this in your sideboard. When you go uh, cast your learn spell, grab this. It's going to turn on all those synergy pieces, those sacrifice outlets for you. Just a great glue card in the, in the Witherbloom deck. Up next, we have Con Quandrix. Uh, they use their mascot is Fractals, and they have a lot of enter the battlefield counters stuff. Uh, and they also have an eight mana theme, or an eight land theme, I should say. First up is Zemo. Uh, two mana uh, for legendary human wizard. One, two. Uh, tap one in the card. Put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tap. So early game, it's going to ramp you, right? You play this on turn two. On turn three, you can play your land, tap it, uh, play another land with Zemo, and you're at four. And then also late game, it uh, uh, she gets pretty nuts, right? Tap four on the card, draw a card. If you control eight or more lands, draw two instead. So it uh, becomes a must-kill threat. Or else you're just going to draw your opponent in card advantage. Uh, up next, Quandrix 
Cultivator. Four mana for a three four. Fine stats uh, in this in this set where the creatures are small. When it ETBs, search your library for a basic forest or island, put it onto the battlefield. Don't have to put it onto the battlefield tapped, but it goes and searches and ramps you as well. Quandrix Apprentice. I really like this one. Uh, this one is a lot like Nessian Wanderer was in Thoros Beyond Death, but it's two mana, two, two, Magecraft. Um, when uh, you Magecraft, you reveal, uh, you look at the top three cards of your library, put a land from among them into your hand, and the rest on the bottom. So this card is amazing at digging through your deck, ensuring you hit your land or drops, ensuring you get to eight lands, and then uh, you can Magecraft two or three times a turn sometimes. So it's just, it gets really crazy, especially uh, because Quandrix has a lot of spells that allow you to play additional lands from your hand. So it just ramps you really, really quick, and this thing gets out of control, and then eventually you're, you're, you're taking 10 lands out of your deck, right? And now all you have are spells left, so you're just drawing live for the rest of the game. Great card. All right, synergy pieces. Talked about putting extra lands into play. So Eureka moment. Four mana, instant speed, draw two, put a land from your hand onto the battlefield. So this helps you ramp as well because you can cast this on your opponent's turn at instant speed. Draw two cards. If one of them's a land, drop that one into play right away. Also uh, very good with Quandrix Apprentice as well um, because if you draw two spells and you have a land in your hand, um, this triggers Magecraft, so then you go find a land, it's just, uh, it can get a little crazy too. Aether Helix, so this one is hurt a lot because it's a sorcery spell, but I still think it's worthy of being included here because of the effect it gives you. Return target permanent to its owner's hand, and that's important, right? So usually you're not going to spend five mana to bounce a land back to your opponent's hand, but there's a lot of tokens running around here, and it's going to hit those. In addition, returns a permanent card from your graveyard to your hand, so it can get your Zamon back that they used removal on, bounce their token, you can get value from it there. It is expensive, though. Decisive Denial. This is the instant speed fight spell. I think this card is great. Two mana, instant. You can fight a creature or counter a non-creature spell unless its controller pays three. This card basically hoses Prismari decks, right, that want to cast a six or a seven mana spell because they're not going to have three extra mana uh, to pay for that, even late game. So this is just going to straight up counter their seven drop uh, even late. Or if your opponent goes to remove one of your creatures, you can have it fight one of theirs. If you have both have four fours out, you fight theirs, and then the removal whiffs. So there's lots of different applications. Very flexible, very strong Quandrix spell. And it's cheap. It's only two mana. Last up, another lesson here, Fractal Summoning. Um, this deck wants to get tons of, of lands in play. So this is 2x create a zero zero fractal token put x11 counters on it um there's lots of different ways to give fractals specifically more counters in the set there's a, a three mana two two that puts a, a counter on all your fractals at common um so i think this card is going to be solid plus it's a lesson if you don't need it grab a different lesson if you do need it grab that lesson when you learn so it's uh it's very versatile and i like those all right up next prismari their, their mascot is elementals, and then they want to ramp with treasure and cast big old spells. But they also have a lot of magecraft synergies too. First is Rutha. Love this card. Super flavorful. Super cool. Uh, three mana for a 1-4. Tap 2, return it to your hand. So you can use this in response to removal on your Rutha. Uh, copy an instant or sorcery spell you control. Choose new targets for the copy. So you can use this on your removal. We talked about heated debate for three mana, right? You can copy that. So now it's five mana. Deal four damage to two creatures. Blow up two other things. Uh, just a very, very powerful card when it goes off. And if you can ramp and cast some spells like Creative Outburst, copy those. Uh... Uh, then it gets really crazy, right? Creative Outburst, 7 mana, but Prismari has lots of ways to reduce the casting cost of these types of spells. 7 mana, instant, uh, deals 5 damage to any target. So if you can copy it, you can deal 10 to your opponent's face, just win the game. Lots of games are going to be ended by this spell. But in addition to dealing 5 to any target, look at the top 5 of your library, put one of them into your hand, the rest on the bottom of your library in random order. So you can go find your more expensive spells and really dig for those those impact spells in Prismari. Really like this card a lot. Uh, you'll also see tap to discard it, create a treasure token. I don't really like that ability, but I can see if you have lots of ways to get them out of the yard um, that it could be okay. It could be useful as well to help ramp you or splash or whatever you need to do. Next up, 
at common. We have Elemental Masterpiece. I think you're going to need some ways to lower the cost of this to make it really useful, but it does create uh, 8 power and toughness, right? Two four four Elemental tokens come into play uh, when you cast this for 7 mana. Uh, and as we're going to see, there's lots of ways to reduce the cost, like this one. Um, synergy Pieces. Spectacle Mage, 3 mana for a 2-2 flyer, it's already fine, it's a wind rate, it's good. Uh, instant and sorcery spells you cast with a mana value 5 or greater, cost 1 less to cast. You get 2 of these in play and all of a sudden, you're casting that uh, 7 mana is now 5 mana. Super easy to do, and then you can maybe copy it with Rutha, and then you have 4 4-4 four, four tokens in play in one turn. You, have, you added 16 points of power and toughness to the board, and you're just going to win next turn. So there's lots of different ways... Um, that this card can be used. Just a fantastic uh, little beater. And it's evasive. It's great. Maelstrom Buse. Another one. Uh, this one's at Uncommon. It's a uh, 4 mana 2 4 flyer. So it's got a big butt, hard to remove. When it attacks, the next instant or sorcery spell you cast this turn costs X less to cast. Um, so if you can pump this thing, it reduces further. And it can even reduce uh, cards like Heated Debate from 3 mana to 1. Um, so it's just a great card, helps trigger your Magecraft stuff as well, because it can reduce um, cheap spells and make them even cheaper to allow you to really go off. So love this one, love this one. Uh, Practical Research. This is a great card to reduce the mana cost of, or to copy. Five mana, instant speed, draw four, discard two unless you discard an instant or sorcery card. Tons of ways to copy. If you copy this with Rutha, you're drawing eight cards. You're drawing eight so fantastic, um, tons of card draw here, really powerful spell. Lastly, another lesson, Elemental Summoning. This one, I think uh, Prismari may just want to main deck sometimes, even though it's a lesson. Uh, if you don't have an, a lot of learn cards, I would consider maining this one. It's five mana for a 4-4, four, four, and that's just fine in blue-red. It's a big creature, it's a threat. Your opponent's got to deal with it. Um, ideally, you would want it to be in your sideboard and, and have enough learn cards to to go and get it but still just a fine one last up we have silver quill um so their mascot is inklings so those are two one flyers and then they do modular counter stuff so when a creature dies um it uh, moves its counters onto something else uh, it's also the aggro deck and they have the potential to really alpha strike and and kill your opponent out of nowhere first up killian uh, I didn't really understand this. I had to look at all the cards in the set to really understand what they were trying to go for here. It's a 2-mana, 2-2 uh, two, two Lifelink Menace, which is fantastic, right? It's evasive, Lifelink, 2-2 two, two for 2. Great card. Spells you cast that target a creature cost 2 less to cast. So that took me a while to really understand what we're doing here, what kind of spells. And that's because Silver Quill gets a lot of these, these pump spells, and it makes them really cheap. And then you get Magecraft triggers, and then you're casting really cheap uh, spells, and you can cast multiple ones, and you're, you're triggering your Magecraft over and over again, and just it's like snowballs one turn, and you Alpha Strike and, and swing with all your, your buff dudes. So I think that's what they're trying to do, and I think um, it's going to be more difficult to get together uh, in a draft, but when it does come together, it's going to be pretty devastating. All right, up next, Spiteful Squad. We talked about the modular counters. Four mana for a 2-2 Death Touch. So it's going to trade for something, right? And it's good good on defense. Uh, your opponent's got to run something into it. And when it does die, you can go put those counters on your Killian or whatever. And now Killian's a 4-4 Menace Lifelink, uh, which is a huge threat. Um, so uh, a fine card, if, if a bit overcosted. Up next, Shadewing Laureate. Three mana for a 2-2 Flyer. Whenever another creature you control with flying dies, put a 1-1 one -on -one counter on target creature you control. So if an Inkling dies or there's tons of little flyers in black-white, whenever they die, you start buffing up your own creatures um, and make your cheap threats into late-game threats, which is what Silverquill wants to do. The synergy pieces. All right, first up, closing statement. So this targets a creature. So it's already, if you have a killing in play, it's going to cost three. And if you cast it during your end step, it costs two less. In this case, it would cost two um, if you had killing in play. But uh, it destroys target creature or planeswalker you don't control. So it's great removal, instant speed, and it gives a plus one, plus one counter to one creature you control. So it buffs a creature. You can cast it in response to something into com in, in combat to buff your creature. Uh, so maybe it wins in combat or it trades and you kill another thing. Just a great card at instant speed. Exhilarating Elocution. So 
I thought this card was kind of crappy when I first looked at it, but then I saw Killian and I realized what Silver Quill was going was trying to do. Four mana, sorcery speed, put two one one counters on target creature you control. Other creatures you control get one one until end of turn. Get plus one plus one until end of turn. So it triggers your magecraft. It targets a specific creature, so if you have Killian in play, it costs two mana to cast this. Buffs your Killian to a 4-4, four, four. all the rest of your Inklings become 3-2s, uh, and then you can swing for a huge uh, uh, huge offensive turn, gain a bunch of life with your lifelink stuff, you have evasive threats, so it's just a good game finisher. That's also going to trigger your Magecraft, enable you to cast more instants and sorceries that turn uh, for more Magecraft triggers. So I think it's a good glue card, and good finisher. Uh, Rise of Extus. This is a bit overcosted, so at, at six mana, uh, but it kills something dead and it helps you learn. Well, it, it, it does learn. <laughs> uh, so exile target creature and exile up to one target instant or sorcery card from a graveyard, which can be relevant against Prismari and, and Lore Hold, I guess, uh, in some cases. Uh, but then you learn. Uh, so you go get your lesson, whatever it is, um, and then you get value that way. And if you have killing and play, it costs four, which is a great rate. Last up. Inkling Summon, this is the, the lesson that you can go grab, right? Three mana, make a 2-1 flyer. Uh, so that helps with your Shade Wing Laureate. If it dies, you give another creature plus one, plus one counter. Um, so just a fine lesson to get. A 2-1 evasive threat for three. I mean, it's, it's not great, but to get it for free, fantastic. All right, that's everything. That's uh, the set. So let me know what you think. Uh, let me know in the comments, in questions, anything we can do. Uh, let me know. All right. Thanks, folks. We'll talk to you soon.